Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, wherever you are. I am Dr. Nazrul Islam, working at Bangladesh Eye Hospital and Institute in Dhaka, Bangladesh. I welcome you all in this presentation on glaucoma drainage devices made easy. I do not have any financial disclosure. In this presentation, I will try to discuss the different technique of glaucoma drainage devices implant, both bulbed and non-bulbed. Preferred surgical procedure, surgical pearls step-by-step, step, common power operative complications and how we can avoid it. And of course, in some GDD implants in challenging situations. We know that recently glaucoma drainage devices are being used in many indications. So understanding and their action, implantation technique, managing the complications are important and to learn it very important for us. Now let me have a poll. Please give your answer within a few seconds. Uh, okay, I can see that 77% uh, already didn't uh, do it. But uh, only 1% did more than 100 and 3% uh, more than 50. So many of you already didn't start it. Uh, so I hope after the presentation, uh, you'll be inspired to start the uh, glaucoma drainage implant. Now, all of you know that there are many indications for the glaucoma drainage implantation. But some of the cases like neovascular glaucoma, uh, post-surgical like PKP, retinal displacement surgery, eye syndrome, traumatic glaucoma, inflammatory glaucoma, and of course the failed trabeculectomy cases, refractory infantile glaucoma. These are good cases for the glaucoma drainage implant because the trabeculectomy do not work better in these cases. Especially if we say only four or five cases, the neovascular glaucoma, inflammatory glaucoma, post-surgical like not only trabeculectomy, after PKP, after uh, vitro-retinal surgery, after damaging the conjunctiva from chemical burn, actually we need to do implant the glaucoma drainage implant. Now there is another poll question, please answer within few seconds. A false is this one, the Ahmed glaucoma bulb and Ahmed clear false. So many of you already answered correctly, very good. Very good you answered correctly because we know that uh, Ahmed glaucoma bulb is a bulb one, but from the same company, New World Medical, Ahmed clear path is not the bulb one. The other statements are correct here. So next coming to the common glaucoma drainage devices. I think all of you know that we have different type of glaucoma device, drainage devices. Some are bulb, some are non-bulb or open tube. So bulb one most commonly used throughout the world is the Ahmed glaucoma bulb. It is a flow restricted bulb is there and also Krupin implants is also bulb one. On the other hand, there are many non-bulb devices. Most common is the barbell implant, both 250 and 350. Then Orbind Aquas drainage implant from Aurolab, India. The Paul glaucoma implant from Singapore. Um, then Molton implant, a shocket tube. These are all non-tube, open tube or non-bulb implants. That's a very important slide for all of you, how the glaucoma drainage device works. We know that after the implantation or after the insertion, the, there is the, around the tube, around the uh, plate, there is a collagenous capsule that forms around the plate of the bulb or non-bulb devices. And around that plate, granulomatous reaction occurs. But this reaction resolves within four months and capsule becomes stable matures over time and usually becomes thinner after six months and becomes a very good filtering blade formation and how the IOP decreased. This is the way that it works both bulb one and non bulb one. It's a very important study done for the tube versus trabeculectomy and it, the study showed many results. One of the important result is that if you do in the refractory glaucoma tube versus trabeculectomy, Trabeculectomy has better results and complications also less in the tube. And again, the requirement of surgery, need surgery is more in the trabeculectomy group. So it indicates that in every way, 
tube is better in the refractory glaucoma than trabeculectomy, according to this TVT study. Now, the question comes all that in your mind, whose uh, device is better, the bulb one or the non-bulb one? Well, there are many studies on this, and especially the uh, Ahmed glaucoma bulb versus the Barbet glaucoma implant ABC study. And it showed that if you consider long-term success, the non-bulb devices are better because the IOP decrease is better after three to five years in the non valved one. On the other hand, if you see the complications, the complications less in the valved one, that is the AGB, Ahmed glaucoma valve. So both the devices has its pros and cons, has advantages and disadvantages. Now I have another poll for you. The whose uh, statement is false. The valve devices need to be irrigated to open up as called priming of the valve. Is it false or true? External plate is usually sutured with 8 or 9 -o nylon. The anterior border is placed 9 to 10 millimeter away from the limbus. Tube placed in the anterior chamber parallel to the iris plane. And device implant at the supranasal quadrant is preferred as it has it causes less diplopia. The whose statement will be false. All are correct except one. 71% given the correct answer that supranasal is not the right place, supratemporal is the right place. So if we make a supranasal, then it will cause diplopia rather than the supratemporal. So all the statements are correct. Thank you very much for the giving the correct answer. Now let us talk about the Ahmed glaucoma bulb. This is a silicone implant. Mostly we use the FP7 and FP8 for adult and uh, pediatric. And also we have the polyproline implant, the model S2 and S3 for adult and, uh, and the children. And both the works are good, but polyproline model sometimes is rigid and has more chances of hypertensive phase and more chances of failure. So mostly, the commonly, we use the silicone implant, the silicone plate, and mostly the FP7 for the adult and for the pediatric FP8, but some surgeons also use the FP7 for the pediatric use, including myself. Now let us see how easily we can implant the AZB, Ahmed Gluco implant. So for this implant, we need a very good anesthesia for the patient. And I prefer to give the peribulb anesthesia with 2cc lidocaine and bubivacaine. But my anesthetist always helped me by giving the midazolam and fentanyl intravenously. So the patient becomes calm and quiet. And usually it is a painless surgery, takes 45 minutes to one hour. But in case of one eye patient, and instead of glaucoma, I prefer not to give PBA, rather I use subtendons anesthesia. Well, the glaucoma GDD implant technique is different on different surgeon. Every surgeon has a choice of doing the procedure. So my procedure, I will try to describe my way of doing it. Like many people use pornix based peritomy, limbal based peritomy. Some people use pass graft. Some people use the full thickness, half thickness, scleral flap, and pre placed suture of the plate anchoring. So many ways of doing. I will try to show you my uh, technique. The next poll question for you is GDD tube should be covered either by donor graft or by patient's owner. So which one is uh, correct? Uh, thank you very much. You have uh, answered correctly. Most of you, about 40% answer correctly, the process MDD1. Actually, there are many surgeons, they use the membrane, but in many studies, it has shown that it is not useful uh, because it does not stay for a long time and possibility of uh, tube exposure is very high. So it is not, no more used much. Mostly use the pericardium or corneal scleral patches. And still then you have done correctly, you have answered correctly. Thank you very much for the answer. Now let us see the video clip, uh, how I do it. And I will try to show you how easily we can actually implant this Ahmed glaucoma bulb. And I tell it the short tunnel, short flap or STSF technique. I try to mark my conjunctival peritomy here and I am doing the fornix based peritomy here. So what happened if you do not mark, sometimes you can cut here and there. 
I am going to 12 o'clock to around my, it is the right eye, the lateral rectus muscle. So if you mark it, it becomes easy for you to do it. This is another procedure I am showing that you can separately dissect the conjunctiva and the tenons capsule to, uh, separately. So it becomes very good dissection. So after dissection, you just open the supratemporal quadrant here. This is a very important step, priming of the valve. Just with BSS, you give some fluid through the tube so that the valves open. You know that there is two elastic membrane in the valve. It may be attached to each other, so it should be primed. Now, this is the case I'm doing the pre place suture of the plate. So sometimes the plate can be lost posteriorly. So it is a pre place. Is it, it is not my re regular procedure just to show you that you can do it. Now anchoring the plate by nino monofilament nylon here, I give one or sometimes two bite so that the whole plate becomes secured with the sclera and does not move uh, with the movement of the eye. Now I'm doing the STSF technique, that is, I'm making a, a short flap here, about four millimeter, just like trabuclate to me, you all do trabuclate to me. And this is four millimeter, I'm doing the tunnel, short tunnel. So I name it short tunnel, short flap. So it is very easy to do, and you can easily uh, give your tube through the tunnel. And in the flap, under the flap, you will put your tube in the anterior chamber. Let me show you, this is a very important part, to cut the uh, tube, tube end in the bevel should be up direction, 30 to 40 degree angulation is, is you can see, angle is very important. So it has more surface area and of course outflow will be better if you cut like this. Now regarding the entry, we use the 23Z needle mostly, but of course you can use 22 also. 22 is not good, but 24 also, uh, uh, especially in children. And myopia cases where the eye uh, is not very uh, is flexible. So in that case, you can use the 24 also, but mostly we use the 23Z needle. It stays it, uh, nicely, uh, the tube goes nicely through this needle track. And very important part is this, during the needle track, you should go in the parallel to the iris. And with practice, you will understand how it goes parallel to the iris why it is not touching to the cornea, why not touching to the iris, that should practice, definitely will learn. But for first few cases, you can go either deep or superficial, but after doing it, you can do it. Then fixing of the tube is very important. Otherwise, the tube may run, uh, move here and there, and the tube may expose sometimes. So fixing in different site is very important by nino nylon again. And buried of the needle and uh, nylon is very important because we do not worry, it can produce a hard hardness after some time. It can just uh, irritate the patient's uh, conjunctiva later on. So it's very important to bury it. Now, you can see I'm using, uh, in this particular case, I'm using the patient's own sclera graft here that I do sometimes, but most of my patients, I do the STSF technique. But whenever in children or in the highly myopic patient, or sclerobalacia, uh, in that case, uh, definitely you have to put the uh, donor scleral or corneal or graft or the uh, pericardial graft. So here you suture it, at least uh, two to four sutures, just to fix it over the tube. And then uh, over it, you can cover it by tenos capsule and conjunctiva. I'm showing another way that it is called the long tunnel. You can see here, I'm making a tunnel of four millimeter. And then from this tunnel, I'll go to the anterior chamber. That is the long seven millimeter scleroconeal tunnel. Actually, this is not a very easy technique. I will not recommend for the beginners. Of course, after experience, you can do it. And uh, even myself, I don't do much this procedure. It is on my older video. And uh, this is the long seven scleroconeal tunnel. This is another way you can do whenever you can do, but uh, I feel for the beginning, you should not do it 
you can start with the STSF technique or with the uh, donor sclera or corneal or pericardium graft. So anyway, after that, you close the conjunctiva. First, it is better to close the tenos capsule, then the conjunctiva, or with the or together you can close it. And mostly we use the eight or vicryl and a position in the two corner, uh, here and here. But after that, I do a horizontal mattress suture from one corner to the whole site of the peritomy. So that it should be a watertight suture. Sometimes tissue glue can be used here, but uh, I uh, did the ato vicryl suture to close the conjunctival layer. It takes some time, but I think if you do the suture uh, thoroughly from one corner to another corner, it, it gives you better result, uh, better secured conjunctival suturing is very important. Though it is more important for trabeculectomy, but also in valve implant. So after that, uh, we can give a subconjunctival antibiotic and we can uh, finish the surgery. Uh, now we'll discuss about the non-valve devices. Already I mentioned that bar belt implant, RD, Ahmed Kriyapa, these are a uh, few of the commonly used non-valve glaucoma drainage implant. In our country, bar belt is not easily available. Sometimes we get it, but easily we get the RD, the Oroban Aqueous Drainage Implant. And we are fortunate. The RD is really cost effective for our patient. So we can use it uh, at a very uh, cheaper rate, uh, comparative to RD, uh, compared to bar belt implant. And we have also a uh, few cases, we got some Paul glucose implant from Singapore. Uh, Ahmed clear path is not yet available in our country. So mostly we do the RD in our country. Regarding the non valve especially the bar belt, it is a unique feature. The large surface, it is 250 and 350 square millimeter, which can still be inserted by one quadrant incision, mostly supratemporal, if it is available. Use a silicone tube and silicone plate, which is barium impregnated for easy radiographic visualization. And commonly we use 350 square millimeter design because larger surface area of the plate gives better result. The plate has fenestrations into which the fibrous growth occurs. This serves the reduce the blade height and prevent complications inducing, including the diplopia. Regarding the RD is the same. Actually, it is a copy of the bar belt uh, made by from uh, our lab, uh, almost the same kind. And we gave a lot of study already uh, published that RD is giving almost same kind of result like the other non-bulb devices. Let me show you the RD procedure in a few minutes. Similarly, I mark the whole uh, uh, conjunctival area so that I know uh, how much to, here you have to dissect a little bit more because RD or the non blood devices are placed under cover of the two muscle. If it is superior temporal, I am covering uh, the two end of the plate which should be under cover of the superior rectus and lateral rectus. You may use the ripcord suture or may not use the ripcord suture. It is 40 uh, proline can be used as a ripcord suture. I use many cases without any ripcord. It's no problem, but ripcord suture gives better result because it occludes the tube better and postoperative hypotony is very rare. We use the occlude, uh, occlude the uh, tube with the ripcord. So I'm uh, implanting the whole uh, device, the plate, under superadductors first, under rectus. Then I'm going, changing my hand to the lateral under the lateral rectus. Once it goes to the lateral rectus, the plate nicely uh, makes its position. And you can see here, the plate is nicely fitted here. Now. There is a anchoring uh, hole here. So anchor with this plate by 9 or 8 nylon. Here I am doing it 9 or nylon. So anchoring is very important uh, because it should not move so that uh, it can cause some diplopia, some cause some muscle uh, uh, motility problem. So it is very important that it is under the muscle. It should be fixed at this point. So it is very important and bury the suture. 
Now you can see I am ligating the tube of the RD by this 60 vicryl, by 60 vicryl. It is very or 70 vicryl also you can use. And after that, you test it. The air bubble is going or not uh, uh, over the ligature. So whenever you're sure that uh, no air is going or fluid is going, then of course you are sure that ligation is 100% complete. Then you can put your tube in the entry chamber. Similar to the Ahmed glaucoma bulb, you are making the uh, short tunnel and short flap here. But probably I'm in this case, I am doing the short tunnel and not doing the flap, rather directly with the needle trap, I'm going to the entry chamber here. It is also possible most of the time, if you do not use uh, the flap, use the donor graft, then you don't no, no need to do a flap. So definitely you can use like this. Go directly with the needle, with the 23G needle to the entry chamber. And to the same track, I, I just hold it with the tooth spot here so that the opening become easy for me to enter into the, sometimes it's very difficult to enter in the track, but if you hold it, by the tooth forcep, it becomes easy to do it. So I found my tube a little bit larger, so I made it bent here, and I sometimes I do it. I sutured it so that it should not be larger size of the tube in the anterior chamber. In the anterior chamber, it should be two to three millimeter, not more. It is a very important part, is the bending of the tube or fenestration of the tube. You see, with the same needle, six, uh, the bakery needle, eight of bakery needle you can use actually, this small needle here, just make fenestrations in the tube so that as I have given the ligation, the fluid aquasimer cannot come to this. So through this fenestration, some aqueous will be passing through this and I'm testing it, you see the aqueous is coming. So that after surgery, some fluid will come with this and IOP will be decreased a little bit. Now, as I use the rib cord saucer here, I'm putting my uh, another end of the rib cord in the lateral part of the lateral canthus of the patient. So after that, uh, suturing of the conjunctiva, just as I did it in the Ahmed glaucoma valve cases. Now the Ahmed clear path, this is not available in our country, but to show you, is really a good device. It's a very small, uh, uh, flexible plate. And you can see you do, you do not need to undercover under the muscle. Just put in between the two muscle that will remain. And this device comes built in uh, rib cord suture. It comes with the rib cord suture. So uh, definitely you can use the rib cord just like the RD bulb. You can uh, try the, you can uh, um, ligate the tube here. And this, here I'm here anchoring the plate first, then ligation of the tube. And similar like the RD and other barbed and other non barbed devices, you can ligate the tube. And going to the entry chamber with the 23G needle and putting it. Exactly the same procedure. Now I'm talking about. Uh, the Paul glaucoma intra PGI it is a very good device. It's a very large surface area, nearly 342 square millimeter. It's made by uh, Advanced Ophthalmic Innovations in Singapore. The advantage of this tube is small, very narrow tube. It is 30 gauge tube, uh, so very, so very narrow tube. So you have to make a needle track with 27 or 28 Z needles, quite enough. And as it is very narrow, you can go into the entry chamber and it takes very little space. And even the closed angle glaucoma, you can put the tube in the entry chamber. So I have little experience with this, uh, some kind of bulb, and I find my patients are doing very good, but still, unfortunately, not available in our country. We cannot do more, but hopefully, it, it will be one of the good devices. Now, I'll show a few cases of challenging situations, like the uh, after the surgery. Say it is a post PKP patient and I need to do the valve implant. Pressure is very, very high. There is a cataract also. So here, a few things are very important. You should not touch the cornea, and the, and the uh, surgery should be as, mini uh, as minimum handling as possible. So I did the cataract surgery nicely, and I thought I'll uh, put the tube just under the, in the sulcus, but I found the S is quite deep here. 
quite deep, so I could put the tube in the anterior chamber as usual, and uh, just from the cornea. So no way you can put the cornea, touch the cornea, so that cornea will be uh, decompensated later on. So it is it, a little bit precaution is there. Otherwise, it is also possible to do the surgery, uh, post PKP or other uh, surgery. Here again, I am doing the flap, short tunnel, short flap technique. I am doing in this case. So here I have just needle track. I have not done any tunnel with the uh, crescent blade, rather I'm just a needle track. The needle track also you can make a tunnel and 23 is a needle, the same size of the tube. It goes to the, on the other side and under the flap, you can go to the entry chamber. So this is also, uh, though uh, with careful uh, surgery, you can do the successful surgery with the tube in this case also. This is one of the uh, case that uh, post RD surgery, our, our retina colleague, many times they send patient with very high IOP after vitreous surgery. And most of the patients with trabeculectomy doesn't help, doesn't become successful. So we have to do the valve surgery here. So in this also, I'm doing the STSF technique to put the tube here. The same kind as I showed in the Ahmed glaucoma valve video clip here, the same way. So there are some difficult cases, but it is possible to do. So now regarding uh, some complications, you know that every surgery has its complications. Mostly we find motility disturbance, infection, corridor infections, anterior posterior tube, migration, hypertensive phase, very important. Hypertensive phase usually after three months. So let me show different stages like intraoperative, uh, then early postoperative and late postoperative complications. First of all, if we do not mark it, suppose I am doing marking here in the 12 o'clock position here, and so that I know what is the 12 position. If you do not mark it, you can make the conjunctive dissection a little bit away from here. So maybe more dissection, uh, unwanted dissection can happen. So I always try to mark it to avoid the unwanted dissection and complications. Coronary traction suture is sometimes very rarely, but it can happen that you can have a perforation through and through. So in this case, the eye become very uh, soft. So you have to put some high density viscosity like this coat in the anterior chamber and you can perform the surgery. And sometimes if one bite becomes difficult, then you can make two bite here. You can make two bite so that uh, the uh, traction become very easy. You can make traction with the 6-0 Vicryl, 6-0 Silk, uh, and also you can make a traction with the superactor brittle suture, but mostly I use the corneal traction suture. A very important this part is do not hold the bulb area of the ACB. Because if you hold the bulb area, the bulb action will be damaged. So never, never we should hold it in the bulb area. Now, this is one of my video. I, I got only one case in my life that uh, lost and found. I Whenever I was just putting it, you see, it is going to posteriorly. So I really puzzled what to do. I tried at least for a few minutes. I struggled to get it down. It is not uh, coming. So I thought I will call my uh, oculoplastic colleague, but finally, fortunately, I found it uh, again uh, and I could be. So many surgeons now give the pre placed suture only to prevent it. So it is always should be precaution that it should not go, uh, it should not pop out or should not go down. So it always hold it in one corner with forceps so that it should not go down or up. As I do the STSF technique, I found in one of my cases, just doing the, uh, the tunnel, I got this kind of perforation. So this is very uncommon, but it can happen just to tell you, if it occurs, you can suture it, nothing else. And it's very important that uh, putting the tube in the anterior chamber is not always easy. Sometimes you have to take not one attempt, you cannot do one attempt, two or even three attempt, you can take. But important is that if you cannot put the tube in one attempt, you, you take two attempt or three attempt, you must suture the needle track. Because if you do not suture it, that will leak the aqueous from that track. And it is one of the most common cause of hypotony, uh, postoperative hypotony. So it is very important that you could you can take one or two track, definitely sometimes you need it. But if you make like this, you should suture with the teno monofilament nylon, the needle track, so that there will be no leaking postoperatively. 
Now coming to the post-operative complications, uh, all I mentioned, hypotony is uh, one of the complications that we sometimes get early, sometimes get in the later stage. So when there is, this is one of my case, they referred to me, you can see here, that is the ciliary staphyloma. And <clears throat> you can see the tube is already extruded out. <coughs> Sorry. And we have to dissect the whole area. And definitely you can uh, needle track in the other way, other place. And of course, you can cover it by uh, donor pass graft, scleral corneal pass graft, whatever you have. Otherwise, uh, this can again make a staphyloma, the tube will be again extruded. So in this case, definitely we have to use the uh, donor graft and suture it. Sometimes you can, uh, the conjunctiva is not uh, enough. So in that case, you have to uh, take the conjunctiva from the other side to make a pedicle graft here. I, I make a pedicle graft, taking the conjunctiva from the superior side, you can see. So blood circulation will be better and pedicle graft has better success rate. Hypotony sometimes may cause the supracordial effusion, uh, supracordial hemorrhage and retinal detachment. So if it is case, definitely you have to refer this patients to your retina colleagues. It's one of the important uh, complication I tell because uh, after surgery of the non-bar devices, as we ligate the tube, post-operative, most of the cases we find higher intraocular pressure. And we have to give anti medication as usual we used for the patient. Many patients do not accept it, but you have to convince the patient, you have to counsel the patient that higher IOP is a common thing after I ligature of the non map devices, and after six weeks, probably it will be all right. This is the uh, another important part is the hypertensive phase. Actually, glaucoma drainage device has three phases. The first of all, especially in the bulb, bulb devices, hypertensive phase, that can occur immediately postoperatively within a week. Then hypertensive phase mostly occur within three months. Uh, because the plate becomes intense, blade congestion, uh, it can have hypertensive phase. And lastly, after four months, it usually becomes steady phase or stable phase. That becomes very nicely blade and the IP becomes decreased. And that is ultimately wanted phase, the steady or stable phase. So whenever there is hypertensive phase, usually we define the hypertensive phase that IOP more than 21 millimeter of mercury during the first three months after surgery, with or without medications. And of course, you must uh, exclude the patient's uh, tube obstruction, retraction, or bulb malformation. Then we call it hypertensive phase. And of course, if we use the antimetabolites, now many surgeons use the antimetabolites, MMC, during the uh, bulb implant just to uh, decrease the hypertensive phase. People use the collagen matrix, and variety of approaches is done. But definitely, whenever we get hypertensive phase, we try to give the anti medication first. We give topical steroids. We massage the blood. We can give the subconjunctival uh, mitomycin C or 5 apu And many times we can do the blood needling with the mitomycin C. Finally, if it doesn't work, then we can do the revision of the surgery with the same glaucoma drainage device. And many cases we need to change the device as a new implant. So, the question comes to which device has more common hypertensive Yes, it has been proved in many studies. Ayala and uh, his colleagues found that many of the patient in Ahmed bulb has more hypertensive phase, 40 to 80 percent, than the barbell 20 to 30 percent or more than 20 to 30 percent. So definitely, Ahmed glaucoma has more tendency to have the hypertensive phase. There are many studies that showed the collagen matrix. If we use uh, augmented with the AZB implant, it decreases the hypertensive phase. And even in child, and because the child uh, lives longer, so definitely their chances of failure is high. So if you use the collagen matrix, many studies showed, found it lives uh, a long time about the success. Corneal decompensation uh, is one of the complication. Uh, you can see here the tube is uh, long enough and touching the cornea. So in this, this case, definitely you have to cut short the uh, tube if possible. And if it, is not, if it doesn't work, definitely you have to change the tube uh, as it is a severe case. 
than the tube in the uh, in the uh, sulcus. Here I am uh, using the uh, needle, uh, a forcep, micro forcep, just to hold the end of the tube. And from the above, I cut it in my appropriate size. And with the micro forcep, I just get it out. Very easily, it can be done. Tube exposure is very important because it is not uncommon to find tube exposure sometimes the, uh, in, in the uh, life of a patient of the uh, glaucoma drainage devices. So here again, you can see I am I am covered with the scleral pass graft, but there is no conjunctiva. So you have to take the donor conjunctiva from the same other side of the patient and just uh, cover the whole thing. And after that, you cover with the amniotic membrane. Tube migration is one of my case, uh, children with Sturzover syndrome. And you see after about seven, eight years, I found there is tube migration anteriorly. So pressure was also high. It was at FP8 model actually. So I, uh, I dissected the whole um, fibrous tissue, the capsule. Then I put the olozen over the plate and then I sutured it, the whole thing. Then patient was doing very good, pressure came down. And uh, after many years, I found the patient is doing very good. Yes, the disastrous complications in endophthalmitis, like the trabeculectomy, it is just the same possibility. You can have endophthalmitis. And most of the time, if it is early endophthalmitis, you have to uh, remove the uh, whole plate and tube. But it is, if it is late, definitely you can uh, do some uh, treatment. And if possible, with medical treatment or surgical treatment, you can keep the uh, valve for longer time. So. Uh, friends, in conclusion, I would say glaucoma drainage device implantation has excellent property to decrease IOP, especially in cases where trabeculectomy cannot help. I believe every glaucoma surgeon should learn it. And every step of the surgery should be meticulous to prevent power-up, post-op complications. I thank you so much uh, for your uh, kind listening. Thank you very much. How long do you leave the tip uh, to the antigen? Actually, I think it wants to know the how long between two to three millimeter. That is the right way. But definitely in case of children, uh, we keep a little bit longer, at least three millimeter, because there is a chance of retraction of the tube in children. So in that case, of course, you can uh, use a little But otherwise, two millimeter is ideal. Thank you very much for your question. Uh, Murtaza, another question. Do you use C in AZB implantation? Uh, well, I do not use in my common routine practice, but in case of failure, especially in the hypertensive phase, I do needling of the blade by MFC. Otherwise, routinely I do not, because many studies, you know, uh, showed that it doesn't have any positive result, but in many studies also found it decreases the hypertensive phase. So there is different of opinion, but I routinely do not use. I use only in some refractory stage, of course. Uh, then the question, how do you decide regarding the length of the tube inside the AC? Uh, already I mentioned, in case of children only, I do a little bit longer. Otherwise, it should be 1.5 to 2 millimeters is enough for the adult cases. Another question, do you recommend the tube ligation in AZ implantation? Yes. Uh, in some cases, whenever I do not want any uh, hypotony, in that cases, you can uh, ligate, but mostly and routinely I do not. But if I find in, uh, in few cases I had to do, if I find that there is no leak, I do not find any leak, then I had to ligate the tube, even in the SDV tube, but post-operatively, not during the surgery. Okay, next question. I used to do Ahmed Bob's implant at my center. Recently, I encountered flat chamber at 10th post-operative day in two of my patients. Very unusual for me. And what is your approach for this case? Actually, when there's a flat chamber, shallow entry chamber, definitely there is leaking. Uh, there's hypotony. Otherwise, it should not be like this. So when there is hypotony, you should search for why it is hypotony. The bulb is working or not. Uh, whenever you implant the bulb, did you prime the bulb or not? How was the, how was the result of the priming? And if you had uh, two or three needle prick, uh, needle track. So did you close it? Not. So there is many ways you can search for that cause of hypotony. 
and I found in some cases, if you put the uh, high density viscoelastic like uh, viscoid uh, for a few days constantly, but sometimes it forms the anti chamber. So you can try with that. If not, definitely you have to reopen it. And after that, in you know, my case, I remember I reopened it. I closed all the tracks, all the places what is possible. And of course, I ligated the tube so that the hypotony decreased and the flat anti chamber became uh, formed. Another question from Anonymous at D. How would you approach a GD implantation in a uh, treated retinal adjustment with three stress club? Very good question. Very good question. I think I showed you a, a, a video. I didn't mention it. That was a patient with RD surgery with a scleral buckle. And what happened? I did the uh, AZB implant. Uh, you just, just your plate should go, just should go just below the buckle, just below the buckle. And only probably is that it can make a height of the blade higher and may cause some diplopia or ocular disturbance. Otherwise, it will be a problem. So you can just posture it to this and suture it, just enter it to the uh, belt buckle. It is possible. Otherwise, you can take the help of the retina colleague and they can cut some part of the bulb and uh, belt buckle and you can put your uh, SB or other implant there. Is it a must to put in the proline 3 zone into the non bulb ZD tube and ligate it? Magnesh Sherwood said, No, it's not. Many surgeons do not put the ripcord uh, 3 0 or 4 0 uh, proline, but they tie or they ligate the tube in such a way that it should not have any, uh, any kind of uh, hypertonia or any kind of uh, fluid should not go with this. It's possible. But of course, I have seen in my practice, if I put the uh, ripcord suture that like they tight become suture become more tight and like I said become more tight and usually the tube becomes more nicely uh, ligated. So I use in some cases I find good result. What are the contraindications of GDD? Yes, uh, there are some cases uh, when the all the four quadrant you will find there is some cellist phyloma or some scarring um, that uh, small eyeball that cannot put the, uh, the plate around it. So I think that's not a good cases. Microphthalmos is very difficult to put the plate in that cases. And the small eye, the interchamber is very shallow. So of course, in some cases, I should mention it. In some cases, in that cases, you can make the posterior vitrectomy, personal vitrectomy by your colleagues. And of course, you can put a bit uh, posteriorly to the um, pars plana. That is possible in some cases. Or do you put the ZDD if there is prior supratemporal failed, failed trabeculectomy? Yes, the next uh, uh, choice will be infro nasal, infro temporal, or infro temporal. And that is possible. And many cases we did it. And especially in the silicon filled eye, the retina surgeon uh, filled with silicon oil. And usually it goes superiorly, it can block your tube. So in that cases, it is better to remove the silicon oil completely uh, if you want to put in the superiorly, supratemporal, or you can put in the infro temporal or infro nasal quadrant. Thank you for the question. Uh, you mentioned that in early end of you remove the ZDD, but in late do not do other using the endophthalmitis. No, actually that is true that if the endophthalm can be cured, if the endophthalmitis uh, is totally uh, removed, uh, make better by your retina colleague and your team, then it is possible to keep the keep the uh, valve uh, in the same place. But in the earliest stage, if the cause of the is from the uh, plate or from the tube, definitely we should not keep this uh, tube here. You should, we must remove it. Thank you. Can RD be placed uh, in patient with scleral buckle? Uh, actually, I don't have any experience with this. It is very difficult to, uh, in, uh, because RD plate is 350 degrees, very big and uh, not like the Ahmed, Ahmed is a little bit longer. So I don't have any experience, but of course, if the retina colleague remove part of your buckle is possible, then you can put it. We use corneal graft to cover the tube. Uh, what is the ideal method? Of course, if you have the donor cornea, you can cover it. If you have the donor sclera, you can cover it. If you have the processed uh, donor graft, definitely you can use it. But uh, most of my cases I use the patient's own skull flap because, uh, because the donor graft 
sometimes you have to have the issue of inflammation or infection. Though our graft is uh, immersed in the glycerol in the, and we clean it very thoroughly with BSS, but still there is an issue sometimes. So I feel comfortable with the, with the uh, patient's own sterile graft uh, rather than the, uh, but if we have a definitely, if we have a, uh, a donor processed graft, definitely you can use it. Uh, what needle size do you use enter the antigen? But mostly I use the uh, 23 gauge needle, but for the children and for the myopic patient, I can use the 24 G needle. And that is ideal for that cases. Thank you very much. In case of short or retractable tube in entry chamber, how to correct it? Oh my God. But definitely if there is a retractive, then you can just uh, have the extension of the tube by already Ahmed Glucom, they have the extensor tube. So you can just uh, suture it, the extensor tube uh, along with this, and you can put this ex extended tube into the entry chamber. This is possible. Though there is some locally made uh, tube is possible, but I don't think it is uh, useful. Only the uh, New World Medical, they have the tube for the extension and that you can be used. What should I do if GDD get out of direction with the conjunctiva with good IOP? What should I do if they really get out of direction to the conjunctiva with good IOP? No. If out of conjunctiva, definitely you should resuture it, recover it, because it can cause inflammation, infection. So maybe you can, cannot put like this. Kalpana, if they really contain it, patients, how will you manage refractory glaucoma? Uh, definitely, I told if it is not possible, then you can do the trabeculectomy again in some other side, like the nasal side or other side, or you can uh, do the vitrectomy and try to do the parsplana. If the anterior, uh, anterior tube implant is difficult, you can try the parsplana tube implant in that cases. But I think most of the cases we can, any of the quadrant is possible to put. And I have seen one patient that uh, three quadrant use the three ball, three barbell bar. So it is possible that uh, with difficulties, it is possible to use the all four quadrant of the patient. So some quadrant will be, hopefully will be present. Which is your preferred GD? Uh, yes, uh, I mostly I do the Ahmed glaucoma valve implant uh, because uh, most of my cases, I want the IOP should come down even in the postoperative period. Because uh, in some cases, the I find the patient vision is very poor. One eyed patient, if I do the RD valve implant, next day pressure can be higher and patient's vision can come down, visual field can come down. And uh, definitely uh, there is a risk of going down the visual field. So I try to convince them to uh, use the Ahmed glaucoma bulb, bulb and I, most of the cases I do the Ahmed bulb implant. Which DDD you prefer for child with congenital glaucoma and gupthalmas and why? Again, for the child, I, I, I uh, prefer the Ahmed glaucoma bulb implant but of course, if the patient's um, children's eye is bupthalmus, that is size of the eyeball is a little larger, then I try to use the FP7 model, not the FP8 model, not the children model, because I find the larger surface area of the plate will have better success. Uh, what is the way to manage a case of video obstruction by vitreous in entry chamber? Very good question, Ms. Avin, thank you very much. Yes, sometimes we find there is iris strand in the tube or the vitreous system in the tube, in the, especially in the pseudophagic cases. Very easily, we can detach the vitreous or iris by the air laser. It is very easy. So by air laser, we can do it most of the time. But in one case, I remember, it was not possible with amalgamator, so I had to use the vitrectomy in the entry chamber. So it's not very difficult. From Singapore, uh, Dr. Wilson uh, asked the question, which is the feature of the implant that you like the most compared to the other GDD? Uh, I think he's from the advanced ophthalmic innovation. Uh, yes, uh, I already mentioned that Paul glucose implant, I liked it because of it very narrow tube because very narrow tube gives less hypotony. And of course, though it is a non-valve devices, it has very possibility of less chance of hypotony. And of course you have to ligate the tube. Of course, you can use the ripcord also. And another important thing is very small narrow tube you can put in the entry chamber, even the angle closure glaucoma. So I, I liked it. Thank you very much for the question. From Philippines, Dr. Angela asked, what are the parts of the implants in children? I think uh, nothing different. Only thing is if the eyeball is smaller, 
you should take precaution and it is microphthalmos it is very difficult to put the uh, the tube in the anterior chamber in that cases also you can have the posturbitectomy and put the tube in the uh, uh, in the pars plana area from sri lanka uh, kushalini asked that two months after rd valve the iop goes to 20 mm marker yes uh, it can go the rd valve also might have the hypertensive phase you know that after six weeks usually comes down but if it goes up then already I mentioned in my presentation, the, both the valve, both the non-valve one can have the hypertensive phase. In that case, you have to start and glucose medication if it goes over 20. Azimuddin from Brunei. Dr. Azimuddin from Brunei, thank you for your question. Tips for transition from trabeculectomy to drainage implants. Uh, thank you for the question. Actually, those who are doing trabeculectomy, they can easily go transit to the valve implant as I showed you the STSF technique because you have to extra do only the posterior dissection and put the implant. Otherwise, you are doing almost like the trabeculectomy. You are making the flap like the trabeculectomy. So definitely you can do uh, as you like. From Nigeria, uh, Ifioma. Ifioma, uh, thank you for your question. You asked management of hepatitis space in the valve GD, prevention and management of post-op establishments. I think I answered in the presentation how to manage the hepatitis space with different anti blow medication, steroids, needling, uh, massage, all these things. From India, uh, Varikuti, Dr. Varikuti asked, how to avoid shallow anterior chamber, postoperative, and post management. Just after postoperative, the shallow anterior chamber, uh, sometimes you can give high density uh, viscoelastics for some time. And usually, many of the time, it works. But if it give one time or two time doesn't work, definitely you are too uh, search for any leak. Otherwise, uh, it should not be like this. Then you have to search. You can uh, still, I think, have conservative management I also do is that you can use the doxycycline. It causes some uh, inflammation and uh, there is some possibility of less hypotony. You can use it. And if not possible, then of course, you have to go to the uh, operation site and find out any leakage or not. Uh, Salman Ahmed from Bangladesh does the device aid the patient lifelong or there are some failure chance too. Of course, uh, all devices can fail. All devices can fail. Uh, very, very rare cases that it will go lifelong. Uh, many of the cases, it remains for 10 to 20 years. But I've seen even 20, 15, 20 years, many valves are working. But many valves are not working after 10 years. So it is not, a, the patient just to follow up, patients to come uh, every six months to the doctor, to the surgeon, and if there is any problem, definitely you can uh, change it. Uh, Fetus Oshoba from Nigeria. She asked, best technique if we already had GDD and want to change GDD? Uh, well, if uh, GDD you want to change for some reason, say for infection or some failure or the fibrosis, uh, the pressure is very high and you have already done needling Already you have dissected the capsule, dissected the fibrous capsule. Uh, you have put some olozen, you have given some MMC. Still, it is not working. Definitely, you have to change the GDD. In that case, just open it and uh, all that quadrant, you can clean all these things. If it is very healthy, that quadrant, you can put the valve in that quadrant. But if it is not, it is better to put the valve in other quadrant. If it is supratemporal, you go for the inforodazal or inforotemporal. That should be ideal. Oh, I think uh, I, if there is no other question, uh, Lawrence, any other question? So we have three more live questions if you want okay, to answer those and then we can. Our last question. Yep. How do you manage the hepatitis phase of which is so common in AZV? Already I mentioned in the uh, presentation there are many ways. Uh, first of all, we give the anti glucose medication and it doesn't work. We give a steroid, topical steroid. We give the blame massage. We can do blep needling by MMC or 5FU. We can revision of the blep. So there is many ways we can do. But you know, in 80% in of the patient, I tell you, it is usually become better with the anti medications only. Thank you for the question. Next question from Victoria. Uh, do we start beta blockers early postoperatively to prevent encapsulation, encapsulation in Ahmed? Uh, yes, it is better to do give that kind of drag that decreases the production, beta blockers 
or carbonic anhydrase inhibitors. That are the two drugs. It is uh, it is preferable. Thank you very much. I think the last question today's session. Your opinion about the anti BSF? Yes, a very good question. I I love this question because I have used in many of my patients the anti BSF. Even after doing at the end, I give the anti BSF. I used even in trabeculectomy. I have a study of two hundred uh, trabeculectomy, and that uh, in that cases I use the anti BSF avastin. And I found better result in my study. Even in the Ahmed Gluco implant, I put the AZB and the Avastin at the end. I put any routinely not, but in case of blep needling, and I use the anti BZF, especially Avastin in some cases. I in my in my uh, clinical experience, I think it works. Uh, so it does no harm on it. Like the MMC, there is a possibility of uh, complication, but in AZB in the anti bzf Avastin, there is no complication I found, so definitely we can use it. I thank all of you. I thank again the cyber site. I thank all the participants. I can I feel many participants from across the world here. I uh, welcome and thank you all uh, for being here and listening to my presentation. Thank you all.